Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to be going over standard deviation projections and what they do. Uh, this video will be covering every single uh, aspect about these projections and how you can implement this into your current model um, and how it can improve your model uh, and your current win rate. Okay, so I'm just going to be diving straight into this. So as you can see here, we have just a basic chart with current uptrend. Um, and then this is going to be your manipulation leg where you're drawing the standard deviation projection. So for the first part of this video, I'm just going to be explaining what a manipulation leg is for those of you that don't understand. So let me just mark this out as a new color. Okay, so right here I've marked out our manipulation leg. So from what I have back tested and all the knowledge I have collected, a manipulation, the highest form of manipulation legs are when we're in a current, this is going to be for a bullish example. So when we're in a current uptrend and then we have a sudden move lower to take out liquidity such as this low down here which is lying inside of her value gap so we have taken out an intermediate term low and then we have continued the trend breaking the high of the manipulation leg so that is a confirmation of the continuation of the trend the break of structure so that is confirming that this was just a manipulation leg not a reversal of the trend Okay, so for a bullish standard deviation projection, you're going to be measuring from the low to the high of the manipulation leg, and you're going to be left with four, uh, three zones, but for now, I'm just going to be going over the first two. Um, I'm just going to show you the settings that I'm currently using. Now, I do use 4 to 4.5 as well, which is up here, but I'm going to be explaining what they do later. So for now, this is the projections that I use. Okay, so now I'm going to be explaining these two zones right here. So as you can see, we have 1 to 1.5, 2 to 2.5. Now, what do these zones do? Okay, so here I have marked out a bit more of a chart. So we have some more history right here. And as you can see, I have marked up two key zones of liquidity. So we have a miniature swing high and another miniature swing high right here. And both of these liquidity zones align with our our standard deviation zones so we have 1 to 1.5 and 2 to 2.5 and we have a high inside of both of these okay so, so diving right into what these zones do 1 to 1.5 i call it the reversal zone and 2 to 2.5 i call it the tp zone where i take my profits so i'm just going to be explaining zone number one first 1 to 1.5 now essentially what i look for for zone 1 to 1.5 if we have a fair value gap and an intermediate term high inside of this fair value gap I went over what these are in another video um, I think my first video in this playlist intermediate term high inside the standard deviation projection 1 to 1.5 has a massive probability of creating a reversal so for this instance as you can see our current trend is bullish so I'm not going to be using this for a reversal. I'm anticipating a slight retracement to potentially fill my entry point, which could be lying inside here. Could be a fair value gap, could be an order block, could be a breaker block, could be a change in state of delivery off this high. And then I'm looking for a higher price. Now in other instances, if if this is a slight retracement on the lower time frame and the higher time frame is bearish. I will be looking to use this 1 to 1.5 as reversal to send price in my favor back to the downside. So I'm going to be showing you how you can use this in any chart on any time frame with any trend. Um, but for now, I'm just going to be going over the bullish one. See, we have our reversal zone right here, 1 to 1.5. You can mark that up, take some notes. I'm personally going to be looking for a price to come back down, fill my fair value gap and continue the trend back up to this high so that is how i'm going to be trading this zone right here now for the tp zone the reason it's called the tp zone is because this is where you're going to be taking your profits um, as this has a very high probability of reversal after coming through the 1 to 1.5 zone this is just how i've learned it back tested it and used it in everyday trading if we do have a strong form of liquidity resting inside 2 to 2.5, that is going to be my target for the day, especially if it is a session high or an intermediate term high. Okay, so now right here we have our bearish standard deviation projection, and I'm going to be trading it the exact same way. 
So the higher time frame is bearish. We've had our trend reversal here. So we're looking for a continuation of this trend. And price is just continuing higher and it's not giving us our entry. Our entry is right here. So I'm going to be anticipating the reversal from this to give us a slight pullback to our zone where our entry point uh, filling our fair value gap and then I'm going to be looking for a continuation back to my 2.5 2 um, TP zone. Okay so now, right now I'm on NQ on the hourly time frame and I've just noticed this perfect manipulation leg so price has manipulated higher to take out these highs here and then it's had its reversal back to the downside and its closure confirming the manipulation. So I'm going to be measuring the high to the low for my bearish standard deviation projection and look at our zone. Our zone, what does it align with? A fair value gap, a bullish fair value gap. So we have a bullish fair value gap aligning with the reversal zone 1 to 1.5. And then what can you notice about this zone and this fair value gap? Look at our massive reaction after tapping this hourly fair value gap inside 1 to 1.5, the reversal zone. This was at a this was at 4 a.m. and then you can see we just continued the move at market open and we had a massive spike up in price of over 400 pips to the upside taking out these highs here so as you can see this standard deviation projection worked really well had a very clean reversal we've also used it again down here now what do we notice about this now we have liquidity resting inside our zone we have an intermediate term low which price came back down, it took out the low and it tapped back into 1 to 1.5, filled the fair value gap and now it's going to, now it just started to consolidate. Um, but as you can see, we start to have our upside move from this. So we've used this in two instances for reversal. <clears throat> we've used this for a reversal to the upside, then we started a bit of a downtrend here. This is another manipulation leg in itself. Look how we've got a downtrend. Then we have a big spike up in price to take out liquidity and then we have a continuation of the trend breaking below the start of the manipulation leg so you would be drawing this from the high to the low of the manipulation leg and now we have another zone right here does this zone align with anything we have an intermediate term low on the hourly inside of this 1 to 1.5 zone so potentially if price comes lower to take out this low down here then I can expect a massive reversal from this zone. Okay, so looking for our bullish manipulation leg now. As you can see, we've got a bullish trend right here and we have a manipulation lower to seek liquidity. What did we tap into? An hourly fair value gap. So this is a valid manipulation leg as we've come lower and tapped into some form of liquidity. So we've taken this out and then we've got a continuation of the trend. So we're gonna be measuring the low to the high of the manipulation leg and at our reversal zone right here price used this as a consolidation zone to then create another manipulation leg to sweep out more lows down here and also tap into another fair value gap so this has created another manipulation leg as you can see we've got our break back above the start of the manipulation leg right here so that is indicating the continuation of the bullish trend so that is so you're going to be measuring the high to the low of this now we don't have any price hasn't come this high yet however this would be one of my zones so i'd mark this out as one of my levels for the day um, if price came this high then i'd be expecting a potential reversal inside this zone so i'd keep that marked up there as a potential reversal zone and that's exactly how i'd have it marked out on my um chart so if price wanted to come up to this high um, then I'd know that I'd potentially be taking full positions off here or I'd be partialing major contracts off this high. Okay, so right now I am on the four hour time frame on Bitcoin. Um, and as you can see, we're in a current uptrend, a bit of a choppy one, but it's still an uptrend. And where's our manipulation leg in this? Where can you spot the sudden move? The sudden move is right here. What did we do? We came lower to take out liquidity. So we've taken out all these lows down here and then we've had a move back higher and a break back above this high, indicating a continuation of the trend, showing that this was just a manipulation leg, not a reversal. So we're measuring the low to the high of this manipulation leg right here. 
and next thing that I notice, 1 to 1.5, the reversal zone, where has Bitcoin reversed on the four hour time frame? It has reversed inside this zone. Look how we've tapped into it perfectly and now we're starting to get our reaction lower. So you can see how algorithmic this is. This works on every time frame, on every pair. I'm gonna go find a couple um, examples on Forex of how this is working. Okay, so right here, um, I've got a Forex pair um, and I've noticed right here we have a slight downtrend. So the low that started the downtrend, I'm just gonna mark this out. And then the high has taken out liquidity right here perfectly. And now we've reversed back lower and we've closed below the start of the manipulation leg, indicating the continuation of the trend, not the reversal of the trend. So always looking for that break of structure back below the start of the manipulation leg to indicate that it was a manipulation, not an attempt at a reversal. So now I'm gonna be marking the high to the low of the manipulation leg that was broken. And right here we have our zone. So I'm just gonna mark up the zone and then let's look what happens. Right there, we tap into the reversal zone again and it sends price in our favor back to the upside. So now we've started to get a bit of a more of a reversal in price. Looks like we're flipping the trend bullish now. So what can we see once we started this trend higher? You can see that this was, we've created a couple manipulation legs right here. Um, but the most valid one that I've noticed is this one right here. So we've had a sudden move lower and then a clean close back above the high. Now what has this move low, lower done? It has taken out liquidity resting right here below these lows and it has tapped into a fair value gap right here. And now we start to get our move higher. So you're gonna be measuring the low to the high of the manipulation leg, seeing if there's any liquidity resting inside here. And right here, you can see that we've got an obvious high in the market. I'm going to be drawing that out and look how that aligns with my reversal zone so if the higher time frame was bearish and i was looking for shorts we've got a lower time frame uptrend so i'm going to be looking for this to reverse to the downside and potentially target lower price so this would be the structure that i'd be looking for if i want to use this reversal in my favor sweep out this high tap into the zone and then we can expect a reversal back to the downside to continue the higher time frame trend. Okay, so now I'm just gonna be going over the last part of this projection, and that is two to 2.5. This is called the reversal zone. Now I use this as a potential target if I can't find any good targets in the market. So if, if price is trading at all time highs um, and you can't find any bullish targets, a lot of the time I will use two to 2.5 as my TP zone. So as you can see here, we've got no resting liquidity down here, but we have two to 2.5. Now look, if you would have been trading through this zone, we've got our downtrend, and once price reaches two to 2.5, then we get our reversal higher. So this is essentially another reversal zone. However, once continuing through the one to 1.5, if the trend is strong, then there's a higher chance of two to 2.5 being the next reversal zone. So I use that for uh, take profits. And as you can see right here, price came lower, seeks two to 2.5, and then we put our reversal back to the upside. Okay, so now I'm gonna be going over the key notes that you should be writing down for today's video. And that is about the valid manipulation leg. That is the, what I see a lot of people struggling with. A lot of my students have been struggling with finding valid manipulation legs. So I'm just gonna be showing you with a small graph. Okay, so right here, I just want you to pause the video, try see for yourself where the manipulation leg is. It's quite obvious, in my opinion, on this chart. It is this leg down right here. Look how price has, so we're creating high highs, breaking previous highs. So obviously the trend here is bullish. Now we do continue the trend right here, but before we continue the trend, we have a move back lower to seek these lows down here so we've swept liquidity and at this point when we're moving down here so without this this could just be a potential reversal we could just continue lower but once price comes back above and closes above the start of the manipulation leg that shows you that it's a manipulation leg not a reversal because it's we've created the break of structure indicating the continuation of the trend so the manipulation leg is 
a fast move lower to take out a form of liquidity. So it could be a fair value gap, which is uh, internal range liquidity, or it could be some sort of lows, some previous lows. Could even be an order block, just something that is come lower to tap into to get a reaction higher to continue the trend. So you'd be drawing your projection from the low to the high of this right here. Okay, so now I'm just going to be going over this in a bearish form. So as you can see, price is breaking previous lows. So the trend is currently bearish. We create, uh, we're breaking structure to the downside, continuing the trend. Now what we get here, a sudden move higher to take out previous highs. And then we get our move lower, gathering momentum from taking out these highs. And we get a break back above the start of the manipulation leg continuing the trend so you're going to be drawing from the high to the low and what you see here here are your zones now what are you looking for inside your zones you're looking for resting liquidity such as previous lows or potential fair value gaps this even works without liquidity inside it as I've demonstrated we've had reversals just from the zone itself without liquidity however I pair it up with liquidity to see where the highest probability reversals will come from um, and how you can use them in your favor okay so for the last portion of this video i'm just going to go over the terms and abbreviations correlated to the video so you guys don't get confused so right here we've got our standard deviation this is just what this is the abbreviation for it then we've got one to 1.5 which is reversal zone and then we've got two to 2.5 for tp zone so that is going to be everything for today's video on standard deviation i hope this one helped you guys um, I'd advise you back test this and forward test this, see if you can implement it into your current model, improve your win rate, or just see where the highest probability reversals are in the market. But yeah, that's gonna be all for today's video.